Hey guys, welcome to Inspired to Cook. Summer heat is here, so today I'm gonna show you 10 coolest recipes you must try this summer. We're gonna do some watermelon pizza, Nutella hot chocolate, banana sushi, and I'm gonna crack my eggs in it. We're gonna do some hot dog pizza, the fusion of jello and marshmallows, super ice cubes. I'm gonna show you how to make a watermelon cake. Ta da! Let's do it. Watermelon pizza. The main ingredient we're gonna need is the watermelon, of course and any fruits that you have. I'm gonna use some strawberries, kiwis, and of course blueberries. The first step is to cut a slice of watermelon, just like that. Cut it into pizza slices. The next step is to cut up the fruit, and again, you can use any fruit, and you can cut them into different shapes. You can normally cut the strawberries into halves, but since mine are pretty big, I'm actually gonna cut them into four pieces. Of course, we need to remove the greenery. Next up is the kiwi fruit. You can peel it different ways. Today I'm gonna peel it just a regular, as a regular potato, just like that. My watermelon pizza size is pretty small, so I just need one nice slice of kiwi, and I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna put it right on top of the pizza, and I'm gonna cut it just the way the pizza is sliced. There you go, so each individual piece will have a little bit of kiwi, but yet it looks like one the same pizza. And finally, we're gonna make it rain with some blueberries. Just like that. Doesn't our pizza look like a beautiful, beautiful flower? Just inviting you to eat, look at that. Tasting time. And it's time to grill. You really don't need anything extra than your hot dogs or your winners, as well as some buns. And the only thing that you need is one skewer. We're gonna start by grabbing one winner and putting a skewer through it right in the middle. If it doesn't work out the first time, you can take it out and put it back in, no problem. And then I'm gonna grab my winner and put the knife right through the skewer and gonna start slowly twisting it. You can put it on the table like that, this way you're not gonna cut your hands. There you have it, then you just take out the skewer and there's your hot dog. I'm gonna turn it up on high to medium high and I'm gonna let my grill pan uh, warm up a little bit. You can do it outside if you like though. I'm gonna put just a touch of oil, oil, just a sprinkle. Once you feel the pan is uh, warming up, you're gonna grab your sausages and throw them on the plate. The beautiful thing about the spiral hot dogs, they will never curl up on you when you cook them. So it's actually much easier to cook as well. Once it's cooked on one side, we're gonna turn it and uh, we're gonna turn it four different times so it's nice and crusty on all the sides. And at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and let my buns warm up by setting them up like that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. When it's about ready, I'm gonna grab my bread and uh, put it with the flat side on the grill. And while you're cooking with your friends, I'm sure they're gonna be very impressed with this. You definitely will have something to talk about when you're cooking out. We take it off the plate and look at that. Don't you just wanna grab one of these and put it on top? Oh, it's gonna be so delicious. Try it. Marshmallow jello rolls. You need too many ingredients. A pack of jello, the small one, 85 grams, and you can use any brand, as well as 85 grams of marshmallows. And to make sure it's not gonna stick, we need some cooking spray. Let's do it. We're gonna drop our 85 grams of jello in our container, followed by half a cup of hot water. And we're gonna stir it up. If you make a normal jello, you actually put two cups, but it's important that we put only half a cup of hot water in it, and we're gonna stir it up. Once our jelly is thoroughly mixed in, we're gonna add the marshmallows and we're gonna make smaller crumbles out of them so it melts a little bit easier. If you use kitchen scissors, it's gonna be much easier to make smaller pieces out of larger marshmallows. Our marshmallows are in and we're gonna take them in the microwave for 30 seconds. This is how it's gonna look and we're gonna mix it in very thoroughly. Once it's all melted and in the same consistency, we're gonna grab our cooking spray and spray our pan. transfer our marshmallow jello right into the pan and we're gonna shake it a little bit to make sure it spreads evenly 45 minutes have passed and we've taken this baby out of the fridge and we're gonna make sure it comes off the pot and we're gonna go ahead and roll it up this way Look how beautiful it is on the back doesn't it look like a cool gummy edible worm, but well, we're about to make it into slices. We're gonna grab any thread, just make sure it's not out of your garage, and we're gonna go around it, and then just push it all in, just like that. You see how nice 
nicely cut. But I just can't help but go ahead and try it. Mmm, let's continue. Look how beautiful it looks. I'm not really sure what I like better, the heart or the warm part of it. You can go ahead and actually unroll them right into your mouth, just like that. Throw the ham on top of it. I'm gonna show you how to put the best spin on the regular breakfast that you're probably making at home already. It's gonna taste extraordinarily and gonna look so beautiful and very practical to eat. Let's do it. Looking at these ingredients, you're probably thinking, well, I know what he's gonna do, but we're gonna put a super cool twist to it. The ingredients we're gonna need today is two slices of bread, as well as two <laughs> eggs, two slices of cheese, and some ham. I'm gonna use the brown sugar ham. We're gonna start by taking the bread and cutting the hole in it of the size of the cheese, approximately. It doesn't have to be precise, uh, but just a square like that, maybe even a rectangular. There we go, same with the other bread. And we're about to take this creation to the cooktop. We're gonna set the cooktop to medium, medium high, and drizzle some olive or grape oil on it. You can use canola oil if you prefer. When the pan is nice and warm, we're gonna throw the breads on top of it with the even side in the middle. I'm gonna put a couple more drizzles of grape oil in it and I'm gonna crack my eggs in it. Your wife is gonna be super impressed with that. Put a little bit of salt and pepper on the egg if you'd like and then you throw the ham on top of it. Just like that to make sure it fits in nicely. You wanna make sure the ham fits into the where we cut through and we throw the cheese on top of it. You want to make sure it comes off and it does so then we're gonna grab our parts of bread and put on top of it. Push it in just a notch. The smell from the ham, the egg and the cheese is beautiful. Mm. We're about to flip it over. Mm. Nice and golden. You want to make sure the other side is nice and golden as well so you can put a little bit of oil, oil, and give it a spin. Make sure the middle bread actually gets golden on the oil as well. And it's time to take it out. Your wife is gonna be impressed. You can decorate it with some greens and then just grab it like that and take a bite. But if you're a real matcha, you take one on top of the other and then you take a bite, unless you're married. Then you have to share it with your wife. So what you do is you grab a couple of toothpicks, pink for her, blue for me, of course the better part goes to her, and then you cut, cut it right in the middle. Mm -hmm. You start from the middle and go to the corners. This way it's gonna stay nice and fit. Mmm, look at that. The yolk is nice and runny, the cheese is nice and melted. Then you take the sandwich, give the best part to your wife, and eat the rest. Super ice cubes. Everyone knows that you need to drink two, three liters of water every day. But today I'm gonna show you how you can make it exciting. The ingredients we're gonna need are pretty flexible. It's basically any fruits you have laying around in your house. We're gonna use the strawberries, the blueberries, as well as some citruses, lemon and oranges some kiwis and some raspberries. We have washed our small fruits and we're gonna cut up the largest citruses like lemon and I'm gonna make small pieces out of them. We're gonna do the same with the oranges. Now that we cut up our citruses, we're gonna start filling the ice cubes in. Before you fill it up with water, you can take a small piece of lemon and just kind of spr sprinkle it everywhere with lemon juice and it will give the ice cube a little bit more flavor. Once you filled in the fruits, you simply fill it up with water. And it's time to take it out of the fridge. You see how nice and frozen it is and you see how cool it looks. Uh, we're gonna take it out and put it in our glass. I took them out, you see how cool they look. You can actually see the fruits really well. You can throw a couple of them in a glass or a bottle of water and uh, they look just amazing, look at that. Mmm, don't you just wanna drink that water? Are you stressed out at work or life in general? PMS symptoms getting to you? Well, today I'm gonna show you a stress relieving, super delicious and completely easy to make treat you can do at home. I'm gonna show you how to do banana sushi. Just the sound of banana sushi makes me relieve my stress already. The ingredients we're gonna need today are very simple. Some bananas, as well as peanut butter and sesame seeds, roasted sesame 
Sesame seeds, optional items are cinnamon as well as cocoa, coca mocha, and coca powder. The first step is to select a few bananas and you want to take out the straight ones, not the round ones on the outside but closer to the inside, they tend to be a little bit more straight. And obviously we're just going to peel the bananas first, we're going to get rid of the end round endings and the next kitchen trick will make it super simple. I'm going to grab my smallest skewer and put it through the banana. Because my banana is not even, I'm going to start from the side and just to make sure it actually goes all the way through. There you go. Because the banana is just through inside, I'm going to grab my second skewer and put it just a little bit above. There you have it. This way it's going to be very easy to hold the banana and it's not going to slip off of your fingers. Now our next step, we're going to grab our peanut butter and I'm going to put it on with a fork. You see how nice and easy it is to hold on. You can just uh, lean it against the cutting board or anything else and we're e gonna easily apply the peanut butter on the banana just like that put our peanut butter in next step is to apply the sesame seeds I'm just gonna start applying them just gently like that very easy, very naturally the other variation of healthy banana sushi you can do is with cacao I actually replaced the peanut butter with cacao by putting it in one of those tea strainers and I'm just gonna shake it up very thoroughly See how nicely it lays. I'm gonna flip it over. And then we're gonna take our knife and simply cut through the bananas into sushi pieces. And the best part about it, you get to eat the ends right away. Our dish is completely cut up and ready. Does not look like super cool sushi. But there is just one problem. I don't have those sushi sticks. But oh well, I'm just gonna get my skewers and I'm gonna use them just like those Asian sticks. I'm gonna grab one of those peanut butter bananas. And... Mm. Perfect grilled cheese sandwich. It's gonna be cheese delicious and you can easily do it at home. All you're gonna need for this is a little bit of butter, cheese of course, and I'm gonna use the white bread, you can use the bread of your choice. Of course we need the actual pan, the, the flipping thing to flip it with. And I'm gonna use a little bit of mayonnaise. I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use the homemade mayonnaise we've done in the previous video. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my small pan on the cooktop and I'm gonna switch it up to medium, medium high. All right, then I'm gonna grab my two pieces of bread and put my mayonnaise on top of it. And uh, we're gonna go to our pan. Then we're gonna cut a small piece of butter and throw it on our pan. Make sure it's hot so it starts melting right away. And we're gonna grab our first piece of bread and put it with the mayonnaise side down on the pan. And we're gonna throw about four pieces of cheese on our bread. You can put six depending on how much you like it. And we're gonna cover it up with our other piece of bread with the mayonnaise side up. Gonna make sure you actually keep the heat on medium to medium low when you have the sandwich on the pan as it actually helps the cheese melt proportionally before the bread starts frying too much. We're gonna let it fry for a little while until one side of the bread actually grills a little bit and gets a little bit of a color on the one side. The beauty of this recipe, it's very simple. You can do it in any weather. You don't have to go out outside to grill it. So why not? Okay, one side looks like it's about to be done. So we're gonna pick it up and flip it. And if you didn't grill it enough on one side, we can come back to it and grill it and flip it again. Mmm, you can smell the cheese deliciousness of this sandwich. Alright, it looks like the sandwich is ready. We're gonna put it in our pan, let it rest for a little. And I'm gonna cut it along to make it look even nicer and to make it easier to eat. Or even in four pieces. Mmm, cheese delicious. The bread is crunchy, the cheese is melting hot. Ooh. Ooh. Nutella hot chocolate. Nutella hot chocolate really doesn't need much introduction. Whether you need a midday pick me up or you just uh, want some comfort drink, it's always exciting. I'm gonna show you how to make one cup. If you're making two or three, just uh, multiply the proportions and you should be good to go. You really don't need too much for this. Just one cup of milk, the Nutella or any hazelnut cream. I'm also going to use some cinnamon and marshmallows, small marshmallows, I actually chopped up the larger ones, but you can substitute them with some whipped cream. And of course we need the kastruda, the pan to uh, warm it up with and the cup to put it in when it's ready. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn up the heat to medium, to medium low, you can start with medium and then switch it up to low as we go. And we're going to pour in the milk in the pan, 
and uh, we're gonna start mixing it right away as it's warming up. Our milk warmed up some, so our recipe calls for one tablespoon of Nutella. Well, we can't violate it, so I just like it a little bit sweeter. Whoops! And I'm gonna put one, but just large tablespoon of Nutella, and we're gonna continue mixing it. Mm -hmm. Well, our milk starts getting the color of chocolate, and I'm gonna share the secret. You can just get it to the temperature that you like and put it in a cup. But what I'm gonna do is actually warm it up until the point the milk is actually gonna start rising and then pick it up with the cooktop. The milk is gonna be so much more creamier and so much more hot chocolatey like. As you see, the milk becomes much fluffier, so it's about time it's gonna start rising. You can actually hear it starts boiling a little bit. Right, as you see, it start coming up a little bit. So you pick it up and start mixing it. It became very rich and fluffy. So we're gonna just pour it in our cup. Mm. If you could only smell it. So it's time to put in just a little bit of cinnamon and mix it up just a notch. Mmm, it's delicious. And then you throw either the marshmallows or the whipping cream on top of it. And uh, it looks amazing with the cinnamon. I tell you, this is the best comfort drink or pick-me-up drink you've ever tried. Super creamy, true hot chocolate. Nutella hot chocolate, not one of those powdery things you buy at the store. Time to grill. And what's the easiest and everybody's favorite food to grill? Of course, some hot dogs. Well, today I'm gonna put a very cool spin on the hot dogs and we're gonna combine it with a pizza. We're gonna do some hot dog pizzas. Let's do it. The ingredients we're gonna need today are very simple. We're gonna need some hot dog buns as well as the actual hot dogs. And since it's pizza, we're gonna need some pepperoni. Not really sure why they're not called mamaroni, but oh well. As well as some mozzarella cheese sticks and some shredded mozzarella cheese or any moist cheese that is good for melting. In terms of devices, we're gonna need some cooking foil and a pan to put it on. Before we do anything else, we're gonna preheat our oven to 360 degrees so it's ready when we're ready. We're gonna start with the bun and the secret pizza sauce. All I'm gonna do is just uh, crack, my, crack my bun open and apply some pizza sauce on it. I'm using fully cooked hot dogs, but if you need to cook your hot dogs, you can throw them on the grill or in the frying pan and make sure they're cooked before you put them on. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my hot dog not all the way through, almost to the bottom, but not all the way, so it cracks open, but stay together. And we're gonna load it up with mozzarella cheese sticks. Look how beautiful it looks already. At this point, we're gonna shape up the hot dog with the foil, just like that. Just get to the corners of it like that. Twist the ends. So you wanna make sure it looks kind of like a boat and that it's holding the shape of the hot dog. And we're gonna let it rain with some cheese. The more the merrier, I love some cheese. For each hot dog, you're gonna need four pieces of pepperoni because you're probably gonna eat one. And then we're simply go, gonna lay them out on the hot dog, just like that. Beautiful. And it's ready to go to the door. If you're making multiple hot dogs, you can actually lay them out on the tray and put them like that. But because I like to overload mine with cheese, I like to make both like that. It holds it in much better. So we're gonna put it in the oven. After about 15 minutes in the oven, we took it out and let it rest for a little so it's not hot. If you put these hot dogs in these foils, you can actually eat them right off of that and you don't have to actually have a plate. Mmm, if you can only smell it. Let's give it a taste. Watermelon cake. Who doesn't like themselves some good, fresh, cold watermelons, especially on a hot summer day? But today I'm gonna show you a super impressive way to serve a watermelon. I'm gonna show you how to make a watermelon cake. Let's do it. The best part about this cake, it doesn't require any baking, it doesn't require any skills, and even a child can do it. Of course, as a base, you're gonna need a nice round watermelon, as well as some fruits for the toppings. I'm using some strawberries, some kiwis and blueberries, and we're gonna use the Cool Whip for the cream. There are different ways to make it. I'm actually gonna use a special cake shaping thing, but you don't have to, as you can actually even it out with the cream. The first step is, huh, I go ahead and take the top watermelon off. When you cut this part off, you wanna make sure it's about the size of this round thing. Again, you don't have to use the round thing, but if you are, you wanna make sure of that. And then we're gonna flip the watermelon over, and that's gonna be our base. And we're gonna take off the top just about as much. Make sure you are safe when cutting watermelon and holding your hand right on top of it instead of on the side so you're not cutting your fingers with it. If you're not using the round thing, you can actually just start cutting the sides off just like that. 
Since I am using the round thing, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in so I see where the shape is, just like that. And then I'm gonna start cutting the sides off. This is how it's gonna look. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply my round thing. It's gonna be much easier now that the borders are gone. Once it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and cut more of the watermelon. And you can eat the leftovers. And then we're gonna push it in even more. As level as we can. And cut off the bottom portions. Look how beautiful it looks already. And now we're about to put some Cool Whip on it. You wanna make sure and taste it out and make sure it's good. Pretty good. The way we're gonna apply the Cool Whip is we're basically gonna grab some and you can do it with a knife or a special and you wanna make sure the watermelon is wiped up with a napkin and we're gonna do it from the bottom to the top, just like that. And we're gonna go all the way around it. And we're gonna put it on the base and we're gonna try not touch the corners because they already look beautiful. So we're gonna just apply it next to the corners. Our base is ready, now we're gonna set it aside and cut up the fruits. I'm gonna start with blue base and I'm gonna put them right at the base so it separates it and looks very beautiful. So I'm gonna improvise with the decoration and I'm gonna cut the strawberries not all the way through. This is gonna be our center piece, just like that. You'll see why we're gonna need to do that. And we're gonna spread it just like that and put it as a centerpiece. Look how beautiful it looks. The other strawberries I'm actually gonna cut in eight pieces since mine are pretty large. And I'm gonna cut it in half first and get rid of the green ears and uh, cut it in half again and again in half. Again, improvise, but I'm actually gonna take my eight pieces of strawberries and stick them in just like that all the way around. Gonna just like I'm cutting a cake and here as well in between look how beautiful it looks and in between we're gonna put, put blueberries I'm gonna put one and two you can put any pattern that you like and I'm gonna slice my kiwis pretty thin and I'm gonna make cubes small cubes out of them by making stripes first and then cut them as a checkerboard just like that and we're gonna sprinkle them around the center piece Ta-da! Does it just look amazing? Look at that! And I didn't have to bake anything, I didn't have to even whip anything, I just cut a few fruits and uh, put the cream on, that's all! And the taste is gonna be amazing, I know that! So I'm gonna make a small incision, I'm really hesitant to ruin this beauty or to start cutting this beauty, but I have to, let's do it! Check! this out your friends are gonna be so impressed with that well i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in comments below what you think and i'll see you next time i'm off to eat it